I've been seeing a lot of claims online that says this BQ PLA HR filament makes really great airless basketballs and might even be the ultimate filament to make airless basketballs out of. So that's what I'm going to be testing in this video today. They were nice enough to send me over a sample of their PLA HR filament to test and make an airless basketball out of. And they even sent me a airless basketball file with preloaded settings and everything. So all that I had to do was slice the print and send it to the printer. I decided that I was gonna design my own airless basketball model for this filament so that I can test if the airless basketball model makes a difference because I've noticed in the past that the airless basketball models can either make or literally break an airless basketball. And whenever I'm printing an airless basketball with flexible filament, I always put the filament in a filament dryer. And I absolutely always put down a thick layer of printer bed glue stick, not only for adhesion to the bed, but also as a release agent for when the print is done because it sticks so well that it can actually fuse to your printer bed. And for most of these airless basketball prints, I've been using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle because that's what a lot of these companies are recommending to print their filaments with. And something that I wanted to bring up real quick and that a lot of people have been commenting on is that I should use the Bamboo Lab AMS to actually make a basketball that has the black lines and orange body to make it look like an actual real basketball. But the problem is that most of the filaments that I've tried and tested are actually not AMS compatible. And really it would just tangle and clog. But if you had some Something like the Prusa XL with a multi-tool head system, that would be an option. I can't really try that right now, but maybe someday I could give that a shot. And after the print was done, there was quite a bit of support material on this airless basketball print, and I was able to get most of it off by using pliers and just twisting it towards the center, and eventually I was able to just tear the rest off. But there was a little bit stuck on the bottom, so I took it out to the garage and used my angle grinder with a sanding disc to sand it all smooth. And I gotta say, it looked pretty good when it was all cleaned up and ready to go. Next, I printed the basketball model that I designed for this filament, and I had to add quite a bit of extra support material for this print because my printer was having some issues printing overhangs with this filament. But after I added extra support material, the print actually came out really clean. I'm still trying to figure out the ideal support settings. I heard setting the Z distance between the interface and the basketball to 0.28 or 0.3 millimeters actually really helps with support removal, so I'm gonna be testing with that. But there was a little bit left on the bottom and I had to take that out to the garage and use the angle grinder as well. And after the basketballs were both cleaned up and ready to go, it was time to take them out and weigh them and test them. The BQ model with the PLA HR filament came in at about 625.5 grams and my model came in at 626.5 grams so only a one gram difference. The BQ model had a good feeling bounce and it didn't really require much effort to get the ball pretty high so that was pretty promising so far. And after bouncing my model, I really couldn't tell any sort of bounce difference between the two models, so we we're gonna have to bounce test them side by side. And after bouncing them against each other, I really could not tell any sort of bounce difference between the two. I even slowed them way down and took some slow motion of it, and they just seemed to bounce exactly the same. I also wanted to see how the PLA HR filament would compare to the WizDream FlexiTuff filament because I've had some pretty good results with the WizDream in the past. And again, I really could not tell any sort of bounce difference between the PLA HR and the WizDream FlexiTuff. They seem to bounce pretty much exactly the same as well. No real difference in bounce with my model either. I also wanted to test the PLA HR against our reigning champion filament, which is the PEBA filament. And even without slow motion, it's very obvious that the PEBA filament is just a much bouncier filament than the PLA HR. I also wanted to see how all of these filaments would test against an actual real basketball, and I wanted to pump the basketball up to the NBA standards, which is between 7.5 and 8.5 PSI. So I decided to just go ahead and pump it up to 8 PSI and see how it would bounce against the other filaments. And just like the PIBA filament, the PLA HR really isn't on the same court, pun intended, as a real basketball. And I will say that bouncing the PIBA filament basketball against a regular basketball is really close, but the regular basketball does bounce just a little bit more above the PIBA. And one thing I will say about the PIBA basketballs is that they're quite expensive compared to the rest. For a full-size basketball, you have to buy two 500 gram rolls of 
of the Piba at about $58.80 USD. So we're talking a pretty expensive basketball. But we're back with the PLA HR and I decided to take both of the models out to the basketball court for durability testing and I decided to bring along the Ataraxia Art Bouncy PLA because I did not get the chance to in my last video. And it was great to actually test these on a real court but I did run into some issues out there. Because it is a 3D printed plastic, the grip on the basketballs, especially because it was wet, was very slippery compared to a normal basketball. And another thing I could notice is that the travel of the ball when you're taking a shot is not quite the same as a normal basketball. Because of all the extra air resistance, it just kind of feels like it falls short. It was kind of fun though because it added a bit of extra challenge to the game. And the last time I took a few of these to an actual court, a few of you were saying that I really didn't make big enough shots with the airless basketballs to properly test the durability so I decided to take some three-point shots and all three of the basketballs that I brought out today survived just fine. So can we conclude that the BQ PLA HR is the ultimate filament for airless basketballs? I don't know if we can say that it's the ultimate filament for airless basketballs but I will have to say that it is a really great filament option especially because it's competing with some of the really great filaments like the Wizdream Flexi Tough and the Dud V2 PLAB. They all seem to have about the same bounce and they all seem to be around $60 for one kilogram. One thing I really appreciate about BQ is that they actually provided an airless basketball model to go with their PLA HR filament so that it is within the NBA regulations and standards. So that alone right there sets them apart from a lot of the other companies developing these filaments. Plus they also give you the option to actually purchase a 3D printed airless basketball so that you don't actually have to print it yourself. And as of this video, they're actually running a Black Friday sale right now, so you can get the filament for a little cheaper than they normally sell it. If you're interested in printing my version of the airless basketball model that goes with the PLA HR, I'll be uploading the model to all the sites that I normally upload my airless basketball models to. I will link to everything in the video description below. And I've been using these pages to keep up on our most up-to-date testing and results for the different kind of filaments that we've been testing. So if you want to keep up to date, follow on those pages or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Overall, the PLA HR filament is a great option and performs just as well as some of the best filaments that I've tried and tested. It was really easy to print and with the right print settings, it should be within all the NBA regulations and standards. The fact that they give you an airless basketball model with this filament is actually incredible and the fact that you can purchase your own already 3D printed airless basketball is really awesome as well. And be sure to pick up some of this filament while it's still on the Black Friday sale so that you can get yourself a pretty nice deal. I have some upcoming airless basketball experiments where I will try and coat and dye some basketballs to see if it will affect the bounce, along with some upcoming filaments that might even be able to compete with the PIBA filament. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.